good? Hello? Hello? Okay. Hello? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello? Yeah, better. My name is Obichi Obiajumwa. I'm so happy to be here. Uh, very, very nice. Uh, meet you guys. Uh, Sophia graduate 2015-2016. Um, and the CEO and founder of Hootspire Innovations. And uh, I know that name rings some bell. Hootspire, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So back in Nigeria, when I say Hootspire, everybody like, okay, what does Hootspire mean? I said, well, Hootspire means some doggedness. It's, it's a word unified in Israel, you know, um, in Hebrew or in Yiddish, where people say, chutzpah, ability to achieve a task, a set goal, you know, some impetus. I don't know the, the, the right words, really. There is, no, there is no language that has the exact words to express what chutzpah means in Hebrew. But it's fine. They don't know, so. Yes. Yeah, so what we do is to promote innovation across Africa. And um, I'm going to tell you how to do that. Our flagship program is um, the Young Innovation Leaders Fellowship. So on this platform, we raise some of the smartest talents across Nigeria and Ghana now. Uh, we teach them how to become innovators. And this is actually through the principle of uh, personal leadership. Every bit of thing I learned at Sophia, I'm going back to teach some young talents back in Africa. And I thought um, that that was a great um, thing to do. As someone trained as a medical doctor, a public health physician, um, with some um, training, advanced training also in public health, but I'm back saying, okay, maybe innovation is the best uh, pitch, the best mission for a place like uh, Africa. I bring you greetings from my family. Um, I have a young wife and a kid that is uh, a daughter that is four months old today. So, it's four months old today. Hey, good to see you. Hey. <laughs> he was my classmate. Yeah, good to see you. All right, so um, personal leadership is what I'm going to be talking about now, and personal leadership is simply self-authentication, finding your voice, knowing who you are, your real self, emerging. That's what it's about. And I, I, I actually think that that is what the world needs today and going forward. And I'm going to be talking about that briefly. And if you're here for an MBA, personal leadership is something you should pay attention to as a principle because the MBA should be able to give you a platform to emerge, a platform to manifest. You're not here to gain um, experience or to gain knowledge around finance or economics because you might as well go do a master's in finance or economics, right? So as you go through this, I hope you get uh, more conscious and intentional about how to manifest and how to solve a problem out there um, like Jordan is amazingly doing, all right, using his gifts as a basketball player and uh, as a tall, a tall guy too. You know? <laughs> so, yeah, so um, that's what it's about. And then for me, I had experiences going through Sophia, which I'm going to try to narrate in four levels of learning experiences. First is um, the physiological state, and then you have the verbal persuasion, um, mentoring, and personal experience. Who recognizes me here? <laughs> no, just show. Show your hands. <laughs> if you recognize me here. Oh, okay. Who recognizes me here? <laughs> and here. Oh. And our graduation day. I know you didn't find it difficult to recognize me in these pictures. 
that was the same way I didn't find it difficult to recognize my own self, my own voice, and to celebrate my uniqueness being in the Sophia class, a class of 35 students from about 18 countries around the world. I found myself uniquely placed. It was just so easy for me to recognize myself. I started for the first time in my life to appreciate my uniqueness, to appreciate my own voice, my core personality. Uh, you know, so going through the uh, Sophia program get, brought me to a state where I was able to, okay, Obichi, this is you. You're uniquely talented and positioned to change the world the way only you can. And that was the first level of experience I had. I don't know if he still does this, but every year, uh, Professor Moshe De Dean would tell students, I expect you guys in the next 10 years to uh, make an endowment of $1 million to Sophia. <laughs> The funny thing is that five years down the line, or four years down the line, <coughs> actually five years, because we entered in 2015, five years down the line, and I'm talking to some of my classmates, and most of them don't remember that statement. <laughs> <laughs> but that statement changed my life completely. Before I got into the, into the uh, Sophia program, my biggest ambition was to go back to Nigeria and become a minister of health, leader of the healthcare, in space in my country, working for the government and kind of thing like that. But immediately I heard that statement, my ambition changed. I thought, I thought to myself, okay, so if this man expects me in 10 years time to give out $1 million, that means he expects me to be worth more than $10 million, or at least $10 million, right? So I said, I, I would not have that kind of money as the Minister of Health in Nigeria unless I would steal public funds, <laughs> which, which I wasn't going to do. Right? So, so I, I said, OK, maybe the thing I should do would be to think about the world as, as, as my playing field, not just Lagos State or Nigeria. Right? So it expanded my mind. I started, I started seeing the world as a smaller place, you know, a smaller playing ground for myself. I started thinking, okay, what solutions can I bring out there that would solve the problems of the world? All of a sudden, I became this giant, you know, kind of person in, in mind, not as innocent as I'm looking in, face, in my face, but I became so strong uh, in my mind. I, I was now thinking big. My, my ambition grew. I was thinking, how can I address problems of the world? And that was, that was a, a very important part of my life. Then that was not enough. As, as about the time I was going to graduate, Confucian City, there was this guy, MD, with a Master of Public Health um, from Hebrew University. Uh, then with an MBA in innovation and entrepreneurship from Sophia, what should I be doing with my life? Confusion. So um, I decided, okay, maybe I'll go to the US to practice medicine, you know, conclude my residency in pediatrics, be a medical doctor, make some good money. Or, or maybe I should um, go to London School of uh, Hygiene to do a PhD in economics because I had gotten uh, an admission the previous year. What should I do? Um, I talked to Iris. Iris said, okay, mm, I don't know that these are the things you should do, but I'm going to introduce you to someone that would uh, be of help. He had some kind of similar experience. You, sh you should talk to him. So on the 28th, I remember, I don't forget this day, 28th of um, February in 2016, I was sitting with Dror Pocard at Ramat Aviv Mall, and uh, he narrated his experiences and, and um, told me, hey, Obichi, what you need to do? Go for your exchange program, either in the US or in China, return to Nigeria. Uh -huh. For the first time, I was thinking, it, be, it dawned on me that it was even possible for me to go back to Nigeria, right? So I thought about it. He made good points why I should go back to Nigeria, because that's where, my, okay, the best place for me to start to change the world. That was my ambition. And um, 
to tell you that made the great impact. And I went on, it was written off. Delta was the highest point and level of experience for me. A Delta Idea Solution Program, which we all know. Delta, you see, I was, at this point, I was about to graduate with an MBA in innovation and entrepreneurship. But I tell you that entrepreneurship was still very theoretical, you know, abstract <laughs> to me, elusive. I didn't know. What's innovation about? Right? I had learned the theories, accounting. My professor is here, wonderful man. <laughs> Consumer behavior, my professor is here. <laughs> so, so I had learned all these theories. But what does it mean in practical terms? Delta demystified it for me. Uh, luckily, I was the team lead, and we developed a solution um, to prevent amyloid diabetics and all of that. Going from the idea and to the concept and pitching it and all of that, I learned a lot within just a few weeks. But what happened? Beyond that, I went for my exchange program, thanks to Hila, <laughs> did it. So went to George Washington University in the US, and you know this same idea was accepted in the new venture competition of George, Wash George Washington University and went on um, to, I created a new team of, of course, and I got to the semi-final stage with my, with my idea. Now, but even before then, even before then, they had told me, hey, you just have one semester. Exchange program is one semester. I told them, uh, well, my idea would have to feature in the new virtual competition, and that was the following semester. Okay, so it was a challenge. What would happen? I told them, well, I'm coming from Israel. We don't really see possibilities. <laughs> it has to just be a way out. <laughs> so they extended my visa for another one semester. And I sit back, I competed in the program, and I got a scholarship, uh, National Science Foundation Innovation Core, Pro Innovation Core Program, of you know, researchers going into entrepreneurship and all of that, that kind of program. So that taught me a whole lot more about innovation in, in, and entrepreneurship. Went on with this idea, and then I returned to Nigeria. I tell you that that experience, idea immersion experience and all of that, got me a lot of um, insight into myself, into my core self, you know, the whole process was super. And I think it's one of the experiences that I got uh, from Sophie that uh, I used, that made a lot of sense uh, to me and that changed uh, my life a lot. Uh, going forward, I would want to say this about Sophia. These four stages of learning, I think that it's something we should try to be more intentional about. And um, let it be an experience kind of model that every student that, go, that is going through the MBA program should have. Because it's, it's where the world is going to today a place where talent is going to be more viable than anything else. It's a place where people's core personality will be what will sell, will be the, 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 what will sell more than anything else. So I think we should pay more attention to those experiences that people will have going forward. So it's a new decade, and I know that we are ask, um, trying to answer some critical questions. Um, one of which is, what does the future hold? What does the um, you know, decade hold for us? And I'm also asking us, uh, uh, <coughs> those questions. And then one of which is, how will the future change? How will it affect business? How will it affect governance and personal lives? What I see is that innovation, um, technological innovation is going to affect the way we do a lot of things in business. Okay, on the consumer side, because of you know Vether and uh, mobile network and all of that um, technology innovation, people are going to the tests of customers is actually going to really change a lot, and uh, is going to have great demands on the whole you know business terrain and ecosystem. So you find out that uh, consumers are going to uh, have their tests, uh, their patterns, their consumer behavior patterns, you know, change drastically. New business models are going to come up and, uh, and, and uh, life is going to improve a lot, going to get easier a lot for consumers. So that's on the consumer end of it. But what I see on the, on the, on the supplier um, end of it is that you see 
the new, new markets are going to open up because um, communication and logistics costs are going to drop. So you find that new markets are going to open up. There's going to be a lot of, um, you know, you know prospered all there kind of thing. And um, it's, 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 it's going to be a time for entrepreneurs to think of new ways and new, new models to be able to create products and services with more quality, you know, less speed and less cost, delivering uh, uh, value. So that's how it's going to be. But you know, the sad thing is that the middle class is going to start um, diminishing because of automation. A lot of people are going to start losing their jobs. And I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued because this is where personal leadership comes in. If you cannot be sacked from what you're doing, then this new decade, the future is for you. So we're getting people to start thinking of how to deploy themselves rather than you know, how to um, get <coughs> employed. And so this runs down you, you know, to governance, to personal lives. You're going to see um, people being more, trying to in demand more from the governments and the governments trying to also uh, demand more from the citizens. So that's actually what the next um, decade is going to be about. Um, having surveillance systems and all of that for citizens and having more control over citizens. So, but the good thing is that the future is a future that all of us can embrace if we put humanity first. All right, if we try to embrace our personal leadership, as I try to put it. But how am I preparing for the future that I see? At the, uh, at Switzerland that I tried to explain that I run back in Nigeria, I, we have a flagship program, the Young Innovation Leaders Fellowship. Uh, we develop skills of locals, people, you know, young persons, average age of 24, 25, into becoming innovators, social innovators. They try to solve problems within their communities, within the society, okay, being solution providers instead of being mere consumers. So exactly the things I've learned at Sofia, I go back to do back in Nigeria and in, um, in Ghana. Three areas that I focus is human capital development. We get these guys from, you know, fresh out of, out of school, some one, two years of experience, and we train them on all the concepts you're learning here already around the innovation. Um, then when they graduate through the four months fellowship program, they stay back on the platform trying to scale up the technologies they have come up with. Then um, physical capital, of course, these technologies, these businesses, some of them try to yield funds and all of that. And I'm looking at the next 10 years, the portfolio of you know, businesses we're going to have trying to solve critical and fundamental problems in the societies. Then we also have intellectual property. The intellectual properties belong to the platform that we have created. So uh, this is, to me, what the future is going to, how we are preparing for the future. The future I see is a place where it's all going to be about intellectual property and physical, in physical, intellectual capital and physical capital, all right? So the winner wins all kind of thing. Uh, that's how I'm preparing for it. Um, comparing my vision to the future of Sophia, um, by the way, we've come up with a number of solutions so far these past two years within Nigeria and Ghana. Uh, I'll be happy to talk about those later. Uh, how should Sophia prepare for the future we see, or the future I see? Uh, there are a number of things I think Sophia should still retain, like diversity, idea acceleration programs, very important, like Delta, the GBS, and um, you know exchange programs. But Sophia should really leverage the fact that it's in Tel Aviv. I think Tel Aviv is one of the biggest assets Sophia has. You know, it should engage more with the whole innovation ecosystem, um, the more mentorship, more clubs, and uh, programs for self-discovery. Then a stronger alumni network as well. So, okay, so this very is slides about some of the innovations we've created. I want to spend um, the last minute talking about this. Theragist is um, a platform that we've created to solve the problem of mental health. Increasingly, more Nigerians are committing suicide. Um, 
sometime last year we hear that every, almost every week an adolescent is committing suicide. Uh, and it's, this is actually because of a lot of depression. You know, mental health is a spectrum. So we've created a platform where uh, young people can come in anonymously and talk about their worries. And then uh, with our algorithm, we're able to pick some red flag, you know, um, interactions and expressions that counselors can follow up on, on these guys and, um, you know, counsel them and uh, give them some therapy. Then Pregnancy Manager is a, is a platform we have designed to reduce maternal mortality back in Nigeria as well. So with this, we are leveraging, we are leveraging uh, solutions existing, you know, government solutions and all of that existing within communities in the rural places to be able to solve the problem of um, uh, pregnancy, um, mortality during pregnancy. We try to solve the problem of delay in decision making, delay in getting to the hospital, to the clinics, and delay in getting to be transferred to a higher center in case of emergency. Gender aid is um, trying to solve the problem of gender-based violence, or violence against women kind of thing. And with this, we're creating a platform to um, train, to train uh, young people to change their mindsets about what their sexual and reproductive rights are. And, and we have developed a board game for, you know, for young girls and young boys to play. So with that, their, 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 um, their mindset is changing and is shifting. Alter food is um, talking about wash, uh, water, sanitation, and hygiene is, is a solution we have created where we are able to save 80% um, water. Okay, so this, this use, uses 80% um, less water than the normal WC. So these are toilet units we have we, we've, uh, developing to take care of uh, uh, opendification going, around, uh, going on in uh, places like Nigeria and Ghana. Now, Winnie Plus is an infant-based formula which we're developing to um, solve the problem of malnutrition. Okay, uh, one out of three children um, under five in places like Africa are, are stunted. So, uh, Winnie Plus is a, a rich um, uh, formula that we have created using local cereals, local grains. Um, and it's, it's, it's uh, very rich and um, we're able to uh, solve the problem of food security. At the same time, we're able to take uh, care of the problem of um, malnutrition. Edu Impact uses uh, artificial intelligence to model and design learning spaces for, your, for young people to improve their learning experiences. Um, it's, a, it's a, a product we're designing in, in Ghana. So for children, you here in Israel, you stay in classes, in the modern classes and all of that, well thought about and you know, designed. So that's not the case in places like Africa. So this is how we're solving that problem of um, early, early childhood learning, early learning. Uh, we're designing spaces, giving the needs, specific needs of the children. Agri-Trade is just like an eBay for agri-produce agri within, within Ghana, where we, um, farmers are able to sell their produce to the highest bidder on the platform. Then Auto Agric is a platform where farmers are able to assess land for farming. So you, you, you want a land, you want a land, yeah, you can go to Auto Agric and you get it um, to, to use. My inspiration, my biggest inspiration, of course, is the Israeli story. Is the Israeli story. Uh, that is the story behind my uh, naming the platform I run, Hootspa. Okay, I've already explained to you what I think Huspa is. Uh, I, I think that it's an amazing story that the, the uh, Israeli people have. Uh, a people that within a space of four decades gone from a developing country to a developed country. And I think everybody has something to learn from that. So uh, one of the things I picked studying here, I say it again, is Huspa. And um, I think that for us in Africa, to, for us to move from where we are today to where we ought to be, we need some elements of chutzpah. And um, it's my inspiration from, from that. So my message is just this. Everybody has a role to play in driving the future that, uh, that we're going to see in the next decade and the upcoming decades. Um,
Thank you so much, guys. So by the way, we're looking out for mentors for my fellows. So you can meet me outside um, after the program if you, if you want to volunteer on a platform to mentor some of the smartest young kids across Africa, Nigeria, Ghana, South Africa, Liberia. Um, we'll be glad to have you sign up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.